All right, you were 25 days out. How are you feeling? Feeling great. You know, there's a lot of momentum that's building over these last few weeks. And, you know, our staff has practically doubled in like the last two weeks. People are coming on board, coming on board. I feel like our message is resonating with folks across the low country, you know, and especially in light of what's going on up in D.C. right now. Uh, our message of putting people over politics, putting our country before party, I feel like that's what this country needs right now more than ever. Hmm. Why run? And also, when did you decide to serve politically? Well, I, I mean, I haven't been thrilled with the direction the country's been going for a while. And I'm not the kind of person that sits on the sideline and, and watches things. And I wanted to be involved. And you realize what's at stake during these times. You know, this divisive rhetoric that's coming out of D.C., you know, and it's not just... Democrats, Republicans, independents, you know, we're, we're all in this together. And I want to look back years down the road when my son is standing eye to eye with me and say that I did something about it. And that, you know, I didn't, I didn't uh, just stand on the sideline and watch uh, these things unfold without standing up for what was right. This has been a high profile race. What do you believe sets you apart from your opponent? I think there's a lot of contrast here. You know, um, my opponent went on the radio a couple of days ago and said this is a race between good and evil. I, I don't think that could be further from the truth. I mean, that's the divisive rhetoric that our campaign is fighting against. I mean, dividing people based upon what letter comes up after their name is just not American. It's not the Christian thing to do. It's not the right thing to do. I mean, we may have differences in ideas and how to get to one specific point. But the fact is, we're all Americans, we're all fighting to make this country better. But I think that saying that another side is evil, someone else is evil, because they may have different ideas than you, I think that that's exactly what's wrong with Washington, D.C., and it's exactly what's wrong with politics. That's why people hate politics right now. If elected, what are some of the big issues that you want to tackle first? Well, I want to put the ban on offshore drilling back into place and it's important that people remember there was a ban here on offshore drilling that republicans independents democrats worked for president trump lifted that ban allowing for offshore drilling any day now my opponent supported that decision to lift the ban i didn't so i want to protect our beaches and our coastlines i also want to fix these tariffs that are impacting jobs here in the low country whether at boeing or bosch or volvo uh, I think they're creating a disaster here. I also want to do something about the infrastructure, mm. you know, because we spend so much time sitting in traffic and our roads are crumbling. We pay a lot in taxes. We deserve something in return. And you're not going to get something in return unless you send someone up to D.C. who's willing to reach across the aisle and work with one another. And our campaign has been a clear example of that. I mean, we've got Republican mayors endorsing our campaign, Republican council members coming across the aisle because they realize we're willing to put people over politics and put our country first. Let's talk a little about flooding. That's a big issue here in the low country. Mm -hmm. uh, what can be done to fix it? What are your thoughts? And do you believe development might be tied into this? It's a big issue. We're here in the low country. I had a, a meeting with Mayor Tecklenburg earlier this morning, who just came back from the Netherlands, who was studying the issue over there. And there are some things that state and local government can do, and the federal government needs to jump in when they can as well. On a larger issue, we're dealing with climate change, and we need to have someone up there who believes in science. This should not be up for debate anymore, that climate change is real, and it's happening. And I know it every time I drive down East Bay Street, if it's on high tide, I know I gotta go around it. Or I know that if it's heavy rains, you can't take the cross town. But realizing that climate change is real and where to go from that, going through solar industry and changing things up a bit, that's the path forward. Gun control. We had the Florence shooting just last week that's devastated mm -hmm. so many hearts across um, the state of South Carolina. Talk to me about that and where you stand. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I respect the Second Amendment. Um, you know, I have my concealed carry permit. Uh, I grew up in a rural area where we, you know, come to high school and camouflage during hunting season with the rifles in the back of their trucks and locked up. And I'm a responsible gun owner. My friends and family are responsible gun owners that know you check your weapon three times. Make sure it's clear before storing it. But I also think there can be some common sense injected into the conversation. You know, like banning bump stocks. 
um, you know, or universal background checks. And these are things that, that I can stand on with a good conscience because our campaign's not taking any corporate PAC money. We're not beholden to anyone. You know, I can stand up and say where my values are and stand there. And we haven't taken a single dime from special interests or PACs. My opponent, most of her money comes from those special interests and PACs. And therein lies the difference. This is a seat that has, uh, has not sent a Democrat to Washington since the early 80s. Talk to me about the importance of appealing to Republicans as far as you are concerned. You know, we're running our campaign on the local issues, the kitchen table issues that impact people on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I don't know any of these national uh, figureheads that my opponent is running against, but sooner or later, she's gonna have to come back and run on the issues and run against her opponent. Um, and that's what we're focused on, you know, and offshore drilling is a huge one. Infrastructure is a huge one. These are nonpartisan issues. You know, we try to divide people, whether Democrat, Republican, or independent, but we're all in this together. And we have to put an end to this, uh, you know, this political tribalism that's going on in D.C. right now. And there's blame on both parties. Uh, let's be clear about that. But you have to send someone up there who can work with others and who can reach across the aisle. And I'm the only candidate in this race who can do that. We've gotten bipartisan support on issues because we're willing to put people over politics in our country before party. Should we build a wall? I think we're a nation of immigrants and we're also a nation of laws. And we need smart border security. We need to get tough and not just talking tough like building a wall, but we need to act tough. We built walls in the 1500s because that's all we had. Now we have uh, you know, satellite imagery, drones, highly trained border security. We need to give them the resources they need so that we can keep our families safe. You talked, uh, you touched on the divide that we have throughout our country right now. How do we fix that? How do we get back to coming together as one? I think we have to listen to one another first and foremost, and we need to realize that it doesn't matter who you voted for in 2016. It doesn't matter what letter comes after your name. Uh, you know, um, Mark Twain was once asked what his opinion of heaven and hell was, and his response was, I'd rather not say I've got friends in both places. You know, you know I think we need to realize that uh, it doesn't matter you know, who you are, where you come from. We're all in this together. The issues of health care, the issues of traffic, uh, the issues of offshore drilling, uh, these are not partisan issues. We should not make them partisan issues. And when you have people who are trying to divide folks, such as calling them evil, I think you're doing a lot of damage here to, the, to democracy. Let's touch on health care, uh, specifically uh, women. I was reading on your website and you, you spoke about your wife and when she was um, seeing the OBGYN mm -hmm. and the size of the rooms and whatnot. Talk to me about that and the importance of making sure um, we're fair on all sides. Yeah, I mean, obviously women need access to quality health care. That's something we've been, we've been talking about for a while. Um, and, you know, uh, not closing or restricting access to women's health care you know, making sure Planned Parenthood is funded. And, uh, you know, the fact that we're trying to take away women's health care just runs counter to, I think, everything that's, that makes us American. Mm -hmm. Equal pay? Yeah, equal pay, too. I mean, women need to be treated with, treated with respect and dignity. You know, we, we're running a campaign where all of our leadership figureheads are women. Um, and, you know, we, we obviously um, have, a, uh, you know, that's the w that kind of reflection needs to be in the workforce. It needs to be a reflection of what's in our country too. The opioid cri opioid crisis sweeping the country as well. We have a big issue here Huge. in South Carolina. Touch on that for me and going possibly against the big pharma. What would you say about this? Well, first and foremost, you need to have someone who's not funded by them. And this goes back to our campaign pledge of not taking any special interest or PAC money. I worked in the prosecutor's office and um, we prosecuted people for trafficking in heroin. And they came into heroin because they got addicted to opioids. So big pharma and opioids have a big strangle uh, on our, on our uh, health care system. And that stranglehold needs to be broken. And you can only break that if you send someone up there who's not beholden to them, who's not taking their money. Our health care system, you know, in the greatest country on earth, we should also have the greatest health care system on earth. And we don't have that right now. We don't have that right now because big pharma is in the driver's seat. They're controlling the cost. And you need to send someone up there who's not beholden to them. What are some challenges you've been up against here in the Low Country? You know, we, we've our message has been resonating with folks. Um, you know, 
from everywhere from Hilton Head all the way to McClellanville. And I think that this message of putting people over politics and putting the low country first is striking people. Um, you know, it's, um, and we're not focused on what's going on on the national level and the national scale. I know my opponent wants to run on national figureheads, but you need someone who represents people here in the low country and issues that are important to us. And that's where we stand. You have you have an ad right now out um, with Republicans for going their own party, mm -hmm. jumping on board with you. What is their reasoning? What are they telling you? Offshore drilling is a huge issue. You know, our beaches are you know, our pride and joy of, of low country. It's what makes us special. Everything from Isle Palms all the way down to Hilton Head. And it's important to remember there was a ban on offshore drilling uh, that was put in place by Republican mayors. Democrats, independents, President Trump came in and lifted that ban, allowing for offshore drilling any day now. Uh, my opponent said she supported that decision to lift that ban. I opposed it. And these Republican mayors who have endorsed our campaign, uh, Republican council members, uh, see that we're putting the low country first um, and that I share the same values they do, you know, wanting to preserve our beaches so that my son, I can take him out and fish with them on the beach one day, you know, or, you know, we can go down to Hilton Head and not have to worry about a beach closed sign popping up. You know, we want to preserve our natural resources and not to mention it's the lifeblood of our economy down here in the low country. And those are the values mm -hmm. that I understand and folks across the district are seeing that we share those too. Speak to undecided voters across the state right now in this congressional district. What do you say to them? I think that we've got to put this, uh, you know, political tribalism aside right now and focus on the issues that we can agree on, that we can work together on. You know, when my opponent comes out and says uh, good versus evil and, and I'm called evil, you know, that's exactly the kind of politics that we're running against right now. And we cannot get anything done until we send people up to D.C. willing to work with others to produce results for the low country, to fix the flooding, to fix the traffic nightmare, to make sure there are never any oil on our beaches. And that won't ever get done until you send someone up there who is willing to reach across the aisle. You have some political heavyweights supporting you. You have the former Vice President Joe Biden, the mayor of Los Angeles, U.S. Senator Cory Booker. Your opponent, Ms. Arrington, uh, responded in a tweet recently about Booker's endorsement. Um, her quote, extreme D.C. liberals like Cory won't change our South Carolina conservative values. Mm -hmm. Your response? You know, uh, there's no need to respond to things like that, um, you know, because that's just the kind of politics that she's running on. I'll tell you the, the endorsements I'm most proud of. Jimmy Carroll, Mayor of Isle Palms, Mayor Tim Goodwin of Folly Beach. These Republican endorsements, these local people that I know, I actually know, uh, and that, you know, that the circles that I travel in, because those are the people who have put their foot down and said enough is enough. We have to stand up for what's right here in the low country and stand up for our values, and those are the values that I share. Who is Joe Cunningham? Joe Cunningham, uh, he's, a, he's an attorney, he's an ocean engineer. He's a proud father, and uh, you know, <laughs> it's been a, a wonderful eight months of fatherhood, and, and uh, it's, the, it's what keeps me going. You know, when I wake up in the morning and, you know, and my son's eyes start popping open and he starts moving his fingers and like we were talking about, he starts figuring out different things day by day and watching him grow and thinking about the, his future and what kind of world he's gonna be in in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And I look at the direction we're going as a country and this divisive rhetoric that's coming out of DC. And I know it's gotta be put to an end to make sure he has a secure future, you know, to make sure he's gonna have quality and affordable health care, to make sure we have an infrastructure here, make sure he has an, proper education system, to make sure we have beaches we can enjoy. I have to stand up for what's right here in the low country and stand up for our values, and that's what we're doing. November 6th, we'll be here before we know it. You are here in the home stretch. Talk to me about the next couple of weeks and where you're mainly focusing on, who you want to reach. Yeah, well, we're reaching out to anyone and, and everyone, uh, you know, and we're keeping our message loud and clear. We've maintained a positive campaign. You know, every, all the commercials we're putting up, are all in a positive tone. My opponent continues to attack me. And I think that the people here in the low country are smarter than that. They're tired of this divisive rhetoric. They're tired of hearing that, uh, you know, that her calling people evil and saying this is a battle between good versus evil. That, that's exactly what's wrong with DC right now. That's exactly what's wrong with our, our political system. 
and we're putting out ads where I'm talking about I'm standing on the issues and running on the issues, my opponent's running from the issues. Sooner or later, she's going to have to come back and debate the opponent she's running against and talk about the issues, and she has to explain to people why she supported President Trump lifting the ban on offshore drilling, why she supports these tariffs that are crushing jobs here in the low country. Have you felt over the course of the last couple of weeks that you're wasting time having to defend yourself against these alleged attacks? People are smarter than that. You know, they've known these attacks. Uh, I came out my first day of my campaign uh, saying I want to support Nancy Pelosi for Speaker mm -hmm. of the House. And I believe that both parties need new leadership. Uh, you know, I think there's a, th th we need a change in our system. And that's what we've been running on, uh, not, not just more of the same, because uh, we want to you know, go up there and extinguish the, that, that fire of uh, this divisive rhetoric. And my opponent wants to go up there and pour, pour kerosene on it by talking about good versus evil. That's just not who we are as Americans. It's not what's good for the low country. It's not our values. All right, um, your final thoughts. We're wrapping up here, just about two minutes mm -hmm. left. Share yeah. with me whatever you'd like. Yeah, no, we're, like I said, we're running on low country values, uh, you know, making sure there's no offshore drilling. We're running to put people over politics and low country over party. Everybody here in the low country will have a voice when I go up to D.C. I want to be a true representative of the low country and be people and be the, uh, listen to the constituents and their concerns. And that's a stark contrast between uh, the campaign my opponent's running. And you look at the, the types of campaigns that I'm running versus what my opponent is running, and the type of campaign is a symbol of the type of congressman a person will be. Proud of your campaign so far. Is there anything you wish you would have tweaked or, or uh, hope to do better in the future? I'm proud of everyone that's been working on the campaign. I'm proud of the strong leaders uh, within our campaign. I'm proud to stand on a positive message and people are coming up to me every single day. Thank you for staying positive. Thank you for talking about the issues. Thank you for not going into the gutters and, and, and talking about these, uh, you know, the, the, the national politics that everyone else is running on. And so we're gonna continue to maintain that, that message and talk about the issues. And I think that at the end of the day, that's what resonates here in the low country and that's what represents the values of people in the low country. Mr. Cunningham, thank you so much. Yeah, of course, thank you. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Absolutely.